Good evening and welcome to another week of overtime here on WOTM. I am Gerhard Mathingani, joined by our kind of a now new Monday occurrence, Mark Everett Kelly, our sports historian and our researcher. There's a lot of great work with the numbers kind of telling the story within the story of the games, and we'll have a lot of that to digest over multitude of sports. We'll start with Jacksonville State. The Gamecocks ended up making the uh, FCS playoffs. We knew that they would be in because they won the OBC championship a week ago, but we didn't know where they would be. The, the committee finally spoke, and JSU kind of in a favorable spot there in the bracket, it earned a national seed, and now they have a, a chance to gun for a national championship. Yeah, I think a lot of excitement for the people around here. You got to, not only did you get to see spring football, which was mm -hmm. the first, but you also get to see them in the playoffs where they belong, where they were seven of the eight previous seasons, uh, and now they get the number four seed overall. Exactly. Only 16 teams are now into this bracket. Mm -hmm. it, four-week tournament for basically a four-week mad dash straight to the tournament how do you think that hurts maybe slash helps a team that has already played double-digit games you count the four games back in the fall and then you had a full slate here in the spring where do you assess this, this team is and how much was last week's bye week essentially a bye week uh, important to this particular squad well, I think, number one, you have the overall thing of COVID, which mm -hmm. was, they dealt with. And then they played the games in the fall. They had a close game against Florida State. They went up beating Florida International. Right. And then they get a big break. So while he had that big break, they were kind of going over, well, what is spring football going to be like? How are we going to adjust to this? Uh, and then for uh, just the players, something new, you couldn't have fans. You know, you got some fans back toward the end of the year. Now I think there are a lot of like, uh, like 25% like of the capacity mm -hmm. for the playoff game. So you not only got introduced to springtime football once again, I think that people around here like, because everybody loves football sure. you know, around here. So it gave them a chance to do that. So the only game in town, which is the, uh, the other thing that makes it really mm -hmm. uh, exciting for them. Uh, and then you got to see them kind of grow up a little bit and face some adversity when they lost and they had that horrible game where they you know, turned the ball over and they committed all those penalties. And then they kind of learned from that. And now they find themselves in a really great spot to kind of dash to the run here, only 16 teams, four games, a lot like the NFL playoffs here, right. wild card. So uh, it's their time now. Yeah, it's back to back to back, and then hopefully the, the last two teams will end up in Frisco, Texas. Let's take a look at Jacksonville State, where they stand going into the playoffs and who they will play. And Mark, one of the things that kind of stands out, this is a Jacksonville State, not just a team, but a football program that is now – as you mentioned, a, a now a top four seed for the fifth time in history. They're, they're no strangers of having some expectations as they go into another postseason. What are some of the things that kind of stand out as they look forward to their first round matchup against Davidson? Well, I think their defense is incredibly, okay. uh, their, their strength. I mean, you know that they can do things on the offensive side of the ball. Mm. Uh, when Cooper got hurt, um, if Zion's come in and he's played, very well. Right. Last two games, he's been great. He has over 600 total yards uh, and really leads the offense. He's taken over the team. It's now his team. But when you're talking about a defense, you're talking about a team that has only allowed one run of 20 yards or more in their last 10 games. They've held the last nine opponents under 100 rushing yards, mm -hmm. and they lead the nation overall in rushing yards per game with right. just under 82, which in this league, if you can do, uh, is amazing. So they've held, in the last 302 opponent rushes, only one of them has been for 20 yards or more. Right. So you know right off the bat they're going to come out and they're going to stop the run. So now you have to try to beat them passing the ball. Mm -hmm. Not everybody can in this league. Right. So that's a real weapon for them. And along with that, they've also scored three defensive touchdowns, and they've committed, uh, a, 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 they committed turnovers in 11 straight games. So they also are able to turn you over on defense. It's one thing if you can stop the other team. Right. But the teams that have the ability to commit turnovers mm -hmm. and then score off those turnovers right. really give you an additional uh, benefit. And I think Jack State, with all these things they do on offense with ball control and running the ball really well, if they can turn the ball over and make them get some defensive points, that really puts a lot of pressure on the other team because then they can't run the ball anymore. And then you kind of making them do exactly what you want them to do. Right. Uh, you could send a house after them and then really turn up the pressure. And I think they put a lot of those teams in that position. So this gives them, you know, you got to face Davidson. They haven't made the FCS playoffs. Well, it wasn't the FCA, but, but since 1969. So right. uh, they're not going to be facing a team that like a South Dakota State or somebody that's probably a perennial favorite. I think this works out really well for them. Exactly. So JSU earns that number four seed, the fifth time in school history, the seventh playoff appearance also in the last eight years. So kind of 
polar opposites. Uh, Mark, you mentioned the fact that Davis hasn't been in the playoffs in 69. Meanwhile, JSU is a regular in the playoffs, and they're, they're used to the 2014 playoff, and now they're – and now in the 16-team playoff, Davidson, if you don't know, out of the Pioneer League, they won the championship there. So just like JSU, they're a, a conference champion. Into the playoff for the first time, as Mark said, in a very, very long time. Meanwhile, JSU, on the strength of having played some games earlier in the fall, nine wins overall, and they find themselves in the postseason. Head coach John Groff spoke after the watch party when they found out where they were seated yesterday. Here are his thoughts on the upcoming postseason. I think the mental battle was as very much as equal as counterpart with the physical battle of, you know, just what are you going to play? And, you know, these teams opting out across the country. And we was one of the few FCS teams that played in the fall because most FCS teams opted out. And, and some of them did that by choice. Most of them did that by choice. So our guys want to play in the fall. And I think that really those games in the fall, you know, uh, helped us get this four seed, but it also told you a lot about our team. You know, so I think that just bonded us and, and put this team together and to navigate through all that and play in the fall. And the only team in, in that, on that board that had nine wins, really I think over six wins, is, is us. Really excited about the, the opportunity to play in the playoffs and, and be sitting here with, uh, you know, the playoffs going on. And there's a lot of people that said, ah, oh, there will never be a spring football. You know, you don't play in the fall. There won't be a spring. There won't be a championship game. And, hey, here we are sitting here, and it is. And, you know, our guys did a really good job, I think, of, you know, doing what we talk about daily is, is taking care of business of what you're in control of. Excited about being a top four seed and getting to play, uh, you know, those first two rounds at home and getting to open up at home. You heard Coach Gross talk about those first couple of round games. They'll play those at home. This is a look at the first round matchups. The top four seeds are South Dakota State at number one, Sam Houston State at number two, James Madison is third, and Jacksonville State is fourth. So by default, JSU will be able to get the first two round games. If they were to beat Davidson, the second round game will also be at home. And you look at a team, Mark, like North Dakota State, who's usually in this, uh, usually goes deep into the playoff. You know, they're without their main starting quarterback, Trey Lance is actually going into the NFL draft. And so when FCS has coached, Coach Gross mentioned is when a lot of SCS programs did not play in the fall and the SCS decided to play in the spring, North Dakota State without one of their top players. However, they're still in the mix. They're back in with those two losses uh, overall. I think it's really an interesting, interesting field, both with teams that we're, we've seen here many, many times before. Team like James Madison, team like North Dakota State and South Dakota State and some newbies like Missouri State, Delaware and of course Davidson, who JSU's playing. Yeah, and then, uh, look, Holy Cross and Monmouth, they kind of just barely made it in with their right. three-game mm -hmm. uh, minimum that you have to play in the conference. That's right. Uh, you know, I, I don't know if I really like that, but, look, this is a weird year. You had to make exceptions everywhere. Mm. Uh, but uh, it, it shouldn't minimize what Jack State did, right. which is nine wins mm. in a year when a lot of teams – uh, couldn't do that. They couldn't feel the team. They didn't know uh, what the scenarios were going to be. And you got to give them a lot of credit for not only playing in the fall, but playing, you know, getting a major injury and then, you know, rebounding from that. Right. And still staying with the things they do well. I, I think it's a real credit to them and John Gross. Exactly. So all these matchups will be on Saturday. The winners will move on to the round of eight in the FCS playoffs. Meanwhile, a quick shout out today. The National Player of the National Defensive Player of the Year Award is now uh, out as far as the finalists are concerned. And this is basically like the Heisman of defense in the FCS. And it's in, in uh, the, one of the national finalists is a safety, uh, Nicario Harper, mm -hmm. who's had number one an amazing season. But you were telling me kind of the, the backstory behind this award. A lot of people know about the Walter Payton Award yep. on this level, basically the Heisman Trophy. But this award is also named after one of the greats in football. Yeah, well, Buck Buchanan played for Grambling. And at one point in, Gram in the early 1990s, Grambling's defensive, two defensive tackles were Buck Buchanan at 6'7", 270, and Ernie Ladd at 6'9", 290, wow. who just were dwarf people. Mm -hmm. uh, but Buck Buchanan and Kansas City Chiefs, uh, with Hank Stram, he was one of the first coaches in the AFL, which really ga gave these athletes from historically black colleges a chance. Right. Uh, Willie Lanier wound up going to Morgan State. There were a few from Tennessee State, like Gloucester Richardson. Emmett Thomas went to Bishop, mm -hmm. uh, which no longer exists. It closed in 1988. 
uh, and Buck Buchanan was one of those guys. 6'7", 270. Uh, I, I kind of refer to him as like a Nephilim. Mm -hmm. uh, my brother, who watched the AFL games when he was younger, like uh, if you did something wrong, Buck Buchanan's going to come for you. <laughs> right. You know, uh, and also uh, one of the first uh, teams to really play uh, African Americans on defense and uh, positions like middle linebacker and defensive tackle uh, was Hank Stram and Kansas City Chiefs, which there's a, a lot of credit for that. Right. Um, and Grambling State has a large number of great football players, Jackson State, Tennessee State, Prairie View A&M, mm -hmm. all of those historically black colleges uh, because of the AFL got the chance to see these guys play and Buck Buchanan was one of them, one of the best defensive tackles ever to play in the NFL. Number one, the first African-American taken number one overall in the 1963 AFL draft. Right, so a great history and a great award behind him. Harper, one of the finalists for that award. Just some statistic keeping. In, in this spring season alone, 51 tackles, two interceptions, also three pass breakups. I saw I had an additional 28 tackles back into the fall, so you more than 70 tackles overall. Made, a, made huge plays everywhere. He's a transfer from Southern Miss from Atlanta, so he's now one of the finalists for that award. That award will be handed out next month, so congratulations to him and good luck with that monster award. Well, coming up next year on Overtime, we'll stay in football. Alabama and Auburn's 8A games are now in the rearview mirror. We'll check in with the Crimson Tide and Tigers coming up next.